Hello and welcome back. I want to repeat this heat vacuum experiment, but this time measure my results. That way I can see how much of a vacuum I'm actually getting. I'm trying to heat the entire orb up to molten at about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. You might have seen this in my new YouTube shorts feed, which is a different format that I'm trying out right now. Real quick here, you can see some vapors kind of flowing in front of the liquid, a little mist. Followed by the pink solution this time, doing that back and forth action. And so during the heating process, there was a lot of air that thermally expanded out of the vessel, which created the vacuum. And then I believe the liquid, as it gets pulled up to a certain point, it begins to heat up and evaporates creating that extra downward pressure. And it's good to remember that that vacuum is superheated gas. There's actually very little of it, but it's expanded several times in volume compared to what it would be at room temperature. And so I'm grasping onto one of the Sonic the Hedgehog rings I've made, just in case this explodes. Sonic needs to carry at least one ring to maintain his invulnerability, so... I thought it would make a great necklace. That's another one of the shorts I made as I'm about halfway through the Sonic Gaming with Glass episode. We'll be playing the original Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll have a special guest as well, so it should be a lot of fun. Now, I'm trying to prop this up and kind of get away from it a little bit since if it explodes, it'll be any time now. But if not, then we'll figure out how much of a vacuum that little bit of air will make once it cools back down to room temperature. I thought it might be neat to try to encapsulate some things in a vacuum, like a feather to do a classic feather drop experiment. And now in a few magic moments here, we'll see a couple things happen. This humidity will build up on the inside of the orb. And then in the next 10 seconds that Gas will condense back down and fill up almost the entire contents of the orb. I'm kind of surprised it happened so quickly. Maybe it's the liquid itself that's cooling things down. Like once it reaches up to that certain point, it gets so much surface area and it starts to rapidly cool the air inside. Then again, I believe air does make the most of its transition lower on the temperature scale. You know, as you go higher up, you get diminishing returns. So you can't get a 100% vacuum, that should be impossible. But now I'll go ahead and drain the liquid out and measure it. Then I'll fill it up completely full and measure it again and compare the two. And so I have 125 milliliters in the vacuum chamber and 150 milliliters when it's full. And so I believe that's one sixth normal air with 3% oxygen. This is the first step to my side quest in vacuum pressuring. I don't know where this is leading, but I'm excited to find out. 